हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन क्लासिकल इलेक्ट्रोडाइनमिक्स एंड टुडे वी हैव लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स एंड एसेंशियली वी आर वी आर मेकिंग द कंटिन्यूएशन टू द प्लेस वेयर वी स्टॉप्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास नेमली द डिस्कशन अबाउट द लेजेंडर एंड असोसिएटेड लेजेंडर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस विद रेफरेंस टू द स्पेरिकल पोलार कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम सो our main discussion that was going on in the last class is that we are interested to get the solution to the electrostatic boundary valley problem which means that we are going to solve the laplace equation in three dimensions in the spherical polar coordinate system so the statement of the problem will be like this you you consider a sphere for example and then on the surface of the sphere a potential will be specified specified means Uh, we are going to apply certain potential let us say electric potential we are going to apply once you apply that we can ask the question what would be the electric potential in inside the sphere so the the statement of the problem is clear and this kind of problem is what is known as electrostatic boundary valley problem and the and the solution methodology is to solve the laplace equation and before we can solve the laplace equation in the spherical polar coordinates we need a little amount of mathematical background so we are collecting some information which are useful to do that work and in this particular direction we have seen in the last class three important results one is about the e to the power of i theta that kind of solution that means sin theta and cos theta solution that is first thing second thing is about the about the cauchy euler equation uh, actually it is frequently it is called euler equation for convenience but the full name is the cauchy euler equation that is another important piece of information required and finally we need what is known as legendre differential equation and the associated legendre differential equation these things are required before we can uh, get the solution to the poisson uh, before we can get the solution to the laplace equation so let me therefore go to the screen and then show you the equations that we had in the last class and especially in our last class all the variables that we are that were there in the equation were only x right x was there and of course dependent variable is no problem we were using y so the point to be noted is that we would like to have a connection between this kind of equation with the spherical polar namely that uh, where is the uh, polar variables namely theta and phi is going to enter into these kinds of equation namely the cauchy euler equation and then the legendre followed by associated legendre so that is the that is the discussion that we started in the last class and then we are going to continue now so let me therefore show the screen and then proceed so here is the uh, plan of work for the today's class so we are going to see how the legendre differential equation will look like in the polar form that means how theta is going to enter that is what we are going to see and the moment when you say legendre differential equation you should also understand that it goes along with the associated legendre differential equation so these two will go together so you should remember that associated differential equation is the much general situation and you can always uh, uh, remove one term and bring it to the legendre differential equation so legendre and associated legendre will always go together or if you want to remember only one then then you take the only as associated legendre okay so that is the one which has the additional last term and when you delete the last term you will get back the legendre differential equation so this is the point so once you understand how the legendre equation is going to work in the polar coordinate uh, for our purpose in the three dimensional spherical system we are immediately ready to discuss how to solve the laplace equation in spherical polar coordinate system so that is the today's work let us now uh, we have almost done uh, with the uh, fundamental requirements on the uh, on the background mathematics and therefore you must be feeling uh, very comfortable in the solution methodology so now uh, i will i will explain now how the cos theta uh, we are going to substitute or why why we are going to substitute cos theta here so the point to be noted is that in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system of course you know what is spherical polar coordinate system but uh, if you look at this particular diagram you can understand why cos theta has to come but not sin theta okay so the question comes 
no when i when i substitute when i say that you have you have to proceed with the substitution of cos theta question comes why should i substitute cos theta you can ask the question why not sin theta so in order to get this clear idea if you if you have a look at this particular configuration of the spherical polar coordinate system where you have the cartesian axis x y z is like this and the point to be noted is that when you want you have any point this is any point on the sphere i want to measure what is the angle uh, with respect to the z axis only then it is called theta if you want to measure with reference to the x axis that means in this direction you can measure along the horizontal circle you can measure it but if you measure that then that angle will be phi so that phi is there here so the, the point is that what angle you are going to measure so that should be clear and when you are measuring the angle along this uh, vertical circle like this then the angle is known as theta and the name that is given is polar angle so this axis is the z axis and therefore the measurement has to be done from the z axis so there is a arrow here okay you measure it from the uh, z axis until you reach the point and that angle is called the theta and these three equations are quite familiar this is the equation corresponding to the cartesian to the uh, spherical polar and vice versa you can write down like this and in this three you, you have to have three of them right x equal to this much y and z out of this three here Uh, we are interested in only z equal to r cos theta because that is the that is the expression which contains only theta if you want to consider x and y then it is a combination of theta and phi we don't want that so there is no uh, relevance for the phi here in our in our discussion okay so this particular expression is only for the theta component so as you know as you know in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system you have r comma theta comma phi so we are interested to discuss only the phi part i mean theta part and therefore the the equation that contains only theta is the z and it's very clear that uh, the the z axis as you can easily see that if you if you complete this particular triangle this uh, this right angle triangle and if this is the radius r that you have then automatically r into cos theta will be along the z axis that is what it is so therefore and if you are going to consider unit sphere so r is not always uh, necessary so if you are going to consider unit sphere which means that r equal to unity uh, basically you are getting z equal to cos theta and therefore then that is the reason why we are going to substitute cos theta in place of z okay but uh, i will tell you what is the z coming into picture uh, this point this diagram you remember and then you have this particular variable z here not the x you don't have x you don't have y okay so then in addition okay that is first point second point is what is the allowed region for theta in the spherical polar coordinate system the allowed region is only 0 to pi so 0 means this top uh, i mean 0 you understand right 0 means uh, i am making zero angle so you are basically standing along the z axis if you move 10 degree then you can come like this you are not at all moving therefore this is the point z equal to 0 so if you if you keep traveling like this then if you come up to this if you come up to this then you have made 90 degree isn't it and then if you still come down and then if you reach here that is 180 degree and therefore uh, this is the theta equal to pi so only theta equal to pi is allowed if you are going to uh, travel along the blue color circle then the angle allowed is 0 to 2 pi so that is the idea and the angle has to be measured from the x axis in that particular case so you start from uh, you start at this particular point so this is 0 and then you travel like this all along like this and then return back to the original then it is called 0 to 2 pi so 0 to 2 pi is for the phi variable okay and allowed allowed value for the theta is only 0 to pi only okay so this is the point if it is the case then immediately it is clear that substitute this this theta you substitute into cos theta so cos of 0 so cos of 0 is 1 that is there here cos of 0 is 1 and what is cos of the minus pi so uh, sorry plus pi this pi you substitute here i will be getting uh, minus 1 so therefore uh, either you can say that theta is going to vary from 0 to pi or equivalently you can say equivalently you can say that uh, the cartesian variable will be varying from minus 1 to plus 1 of course cos 0 means 1 right so we are not going to write in the same side uh, you know that the small number has to come here and that is why the minus 1 is here and plus 1 is there so now you understand that the uh, in the case of the spherical polar coordinate system uh, when we are talking about the polar angle only this is relevant expression and the corresponding cartesian variable is z that is a point to be noted not the x so keep this 
point in mind and then let us see how the legendary differential equation is looking like so this is your legendary differential equation you have um, of course this you know already we started in the yesterday's class itself you have the 1 minus x square into y double prime etc the point to be noted is there is x here just now i said that uh, we are we are talking about the variable z in the cartesian system then the question comes why did you write x here the reason is quite uh, common that when you when you are learning when you are learning something you know uh, uh, what is meant by legendary differential equation what are its properties okay uh, you have the generating function etc when you when you want to learn these things uh, it is traditional to start with some variable x when you when you learn for example sin x cos x like this only you learn similarly when a function is introduced you say it is f of x that is how you introduce starting itself we don't introduce f of z there okay we we start with f of x so x is the uh, traditional or typical variable okay we we did not refer to a particular coordinate system anything like that so mathematically we want to uh, write the derivative means dy by dx only we write dy by dz we will not write okay so for that reason the x is there here when you want to learn what is this differential equation and learn its properties that is the reason and whenever you are studying the legendary differential equation you you must have seen this kind of uh, uh, what is called range along with this as you can see the meaning is that is the same meaning that is there here okay that means the variable x will belong to uh, the set of all numbers in between the closed interval minus 1 to plus 1 that is the meaning the square bracket means closed interval closed interval means less than or equal to that is equal to the right if it is only less than means it is called open interval if it is only less than means open interval less than or equal to means closed interval so closed interval will be represented by a square bracket that is what is this so the notation this kind of notation what is there here is exactly or identically same as this expression so either you can use the less than or equal to style of writing or mathematicians prefer this kind of symbol so ultimately that is the meaning that you have you you now understand why you are interested in this particular range only this is first point second point is less than or equal to that equal to is very very important that is a place where some trouble will come the point is that you should consider x equal to minus 1 also is a point under consideration we are not rejecting or we are not excluding so x equal to minus 1 is also an allowed point for this particular differential equation and similarly x equal to plus 1 is also a point under consideration that means we are not going to exclude we are not going to exclude minus 1 and plus 1 this is very important okay and we are going to see uh, what is the uh, necessity of knowing this uh, this particular closed interval okay now you understand why x is there rather than z now that you understand uh, or now that you uh, you realize that the legendary differential equation has a connection with the spherical polar coordinate and they actually x means z only that is the meaning here and therefore if if it is really necessary you can make the uh, renaming of the variable it is only uh, changing the name of the variable from x to z that's what it is there and if you do that uh, simply you write down like one minus z square y double prime etc so that is the uh, optional but the point to be noted is that uh, uh, people don't write like this the reason is because there is a possible confusion that z can represent a complex variable okay we don't want to enter into uh, unnecessary confusion like that that is why uh, we uh, generally people don't write with the z there even though it is a z axis representation okay so z is a real variable so that's what i mean to say so z belongs to the set of all real numbers that means along the z axis all numbers are real so the possible confusion of the uh, complex variable should be avoided in this case and therefore what happens is uh, the, uh, let us better to keep uh, x itself and understand that we are going to substitute cos theta there so if this if this particular point is understood then uh, then there is no need to make the uh, renaming of the variable from x to z okay but instead of that we can simply continue uh, with x as the convenient variable so that is a, that is a tradition that we that everyone follows and therefore i am also explaining uh, the, the main confusion or main doubt that you may get is that uh, in this previous one we have written uh, z here so you may get confusion whether it is z here or that x okay we are not talking about this x now okay this is the same z and now we are simply uh, uh, we are simply considering that z as a mathematical x variable that's all about it okay fine so once these things are clear 
uh, we will we can now proceed next so uh, what is that we are going to do is that we we now write down the original legendre differential equation like this uh, which is 1 minus x square y double prime minus the derivative of this 1 minus x square derivative is minus 2x okay so minus 2x into y single prime plus a constant into y equal to 0 so this differential equation we are going to compare with the standard uv rule you know, the what you call the product rule of the differentiation which says that u times v prime okay derivative of the product equal to first term into second term derivative plus second term into first term derivative so we would like to compare these two things there are three terms are there right here the last term you forget now these two terms we will compare with this and by comparison can you identify uh, which one can be u which one can be v that is the question and quickly you can see that u can be identified with this and therefore uh, the derivative the derivative of u will be minus 2x so that will be taken care by the u prime similarly if you consider v to be y prime here then the derivative of v that is v, v prime will be derivative of y prime that is y double prime so therefore uh, uh, interestingly you see the legendre differential equation nicely fits into the product rule of differentiation therefore we would uh, therefore we will write in this particular style namely the uh, derivative of the product okay now the product is u times v so u is coming here and then this v is coming here and the third term we are not disturbing so bring it here and that's all this is the legendre differential equation so the point to be noted is that this particular appearance of the differential equation is always better appearance than the original way that you write okay even though it is uh, uh, we start the legendary equation by saying that 1 minus x square y double prime etc the the more formal way or the more accurate way of writing the legendary differential equation in this particular style because uh, this is in the this is in a form what is known as the sturm liouville form of course the uh, sturm liouville differential equation and the sturm liouville boundary valley problem is already there in your mathematical physics 1 in the last semester so certainly you must be aware of this sturm liouville problem basically sturm liouville problem tells that uh, the differential operator has to be a self adjoint operator and this is an eigen valley problem that is all about it okay a differential equation whose operator is self adjoint and also happens to be an eigen valley problem is going to be the sturm liouville differential equation that is the meaning so hopefully you can catch what i am telling if you have studied that in the uh, in the last semester or you can you can refer if you want so the operator is going to be self adjoint that is the first point and second thing is that this differential equation itself is an eigen valley problem and in that particular case we will say that l into l plus 1 is the eigen value of the legendre differential equation and later as i already explained to you later in the in the quantum mechanics you are going to you are going to encounter the same equation once again in quantum mechanics in particular in the angular momentum so at that time you will see that l into l plus 1 would be the eigen value corresponding to one of the operators in angular momentum so uh, this this is something that is quite common uh, which occurs uh, not necessarily in electrodynamics okay wherever there is a del square operator is going to appear uh, this uh, sturm liouville equation will will also enter into picture okay keeping this basics now now we are ready to uh, substitute uh, the x equal to cos theta so you know where to substitute cos theta now in place of x we have to substitute cos theta which means that we are going to make the uh, transformation of the independent variable or we say that change of independent variable so let me therefore write down uh, what is that we are trying to do let us uh, let us say that x equal to cos theta so if i am going to write uh, like x equal to cos theta then 1 minus x square will be how much you can write down 1 minus x square would be equal to sin square theta and then we will be using the uh, derivative is quite simple and then what we need is dy by dx okay so we need dy by dx and that can be written down as a chain rule chain rule okay dy by d theta d theta by dx and that's all if you know this much we can quickly transform this and let us substitute all these things okay not good so we will substitute these things into the the original equation that you have now we will we will substitute in the first place so let me first of all explain what is this uh, so instead of writing from here i will write it from here 
because this is the place you have a dy by dx okay this is dy by dx so i have a dy by dx here so dy by dx equal to dy by d theta so uh, let me write down the dy by d theta here then multiply by d theta by dx now where is the value for d theta by dx that is there here only thing is you have to invert this okay one divided by so put a one divided by minus sin theta so that is this expression and this expression will be dy by d theta instead of saying dy by d theta you can write it as y prime of theta so therefore uh, we can write down what is this quickly here that is first thing second thing is let us come here in this particular place i can write down the sin square theta so that can be written down here then we can close this bracket here then here once again you have to be careful that this is d by dx but we are going to convert this x right therefore once again you have to come back here so d by dx equal to d by d theta okay this is d by d theta multiplied by d by dx so therefore uh, we will we will write this as a d by d theta and then the entire thing has to be multiplied by d theta by dx and again that d theta by dx has to be substituted by 1 divided by minus sin theta so that's all we are going to do here and for this particular part there is no there is no need for the transformation and we will only write down that y is a function of theta now okay the point to be noted is y is originally y is a function of x for the time being after doing the transformation y will be a function of theta how do you know that means this expression dy by d theta means y is a function of theta that's what i'm going to write so once these things are clear uh, you can quickly follow what i'm writing now so that is the first derivative then 1 minus x square is let me write down sin square theta and d by dx is actually d by d theta and then multiply by d theta by dx and plus the other things you simply copy and now let us substitute this one minus one by sin theta let us substitute now d by d theta other things are simple so i will i will only substitute minus one by sin theta that's all into once again i have minus one by sin theta and the last term is simply copy and now one sin theta is cancelling and then minus is also cancelling so we are we are almost done so the final expression will look like this one divided by sin theta d by d theta sin theta into y prime of theta and that's it plus the last term i think that is the expression there is nothing more to do and this particular uh, appearance or this particular equation that you have is exactly the polar form of the legendre differential equation so the appearance is very important why we are doing this transformation is that by looking at this you must be knowing uh, you have to you have to remember that this is how the legendre differential equation will look for that purpose only we are doing this so let me uh, highlight the final result so the final result that you have is this expression right one by sin theta i will highlight that okay then what happens is similarly uh, i can now write down associated legendre differential equation that is you know what is to be done okay associated legendre differential equation means i have to add only one term that's all so there is nothing to do now so simply copy everything and then you are going to add one term there so let me write down l into l plus one also i am going to one term minus m square divided by one minus x square that one minus x square is sin theta so only one term we are going to add and that is known as the associated legendre differential equation so this is another important result and this is known as the polar form of the ald ald means associated legendre differential equation so these are the two important results that you should know and why did we do all these things okay as i already told you the purpose of doing this particular little exercise is that you have to recognize that is what that is the purpose recognize this kind of appearance that means uh, if i show you a paper containing several equation you have to identify which one is the associated legendre differential equation that's what i mean to say so if you know that if you can recognize which equation is associated lde then okay you are done that's all about it and here the interesting point is that as i already told you if you if you remove the last term you will get back the original ld right so that point uh, you always keep in mind that these two things are not uh, two times you, you you don't have to remember two times 
so if you are going to substitute m equal to 0 uh, then what happens is the alde will become lde that is mathematically how do you understand in physical system is in the case of the physical system we say that the system will system has system has azimuthal symmetry okay azimuthal symmetry means what is the variable phi that is the meaning azimuthal variable means phi so that phi angle that is the phi variable will be missing missing means you know from classical mechanics right whenever a symmetry is present that variable will be missing in the equation it's the same thing if the phi variable is missing means we say that the system has azimuthal symmetry and which means that m equal to 0 so this m equal to 0 is that is the meaning so once this is clear uh, then then let us see how the general solution to the associated differential equation will look like what is the appearance so let me therefore write down the general solution to the alde i am not going to uh, derive the entire expression by power series method but instead i would like to write down how it is going to look like so there are two solutions are there uh, uh, here let me explain first of all what i am trying to write uh, you must have studied of course uh, associated legender and legender bessel differential all these things were there in your first paper on mathematical physics and certainly you know the solution method the solution method is actually the the power series method that you can use and in which case uh, you can always get two linearly independent solution this linearly differential equation is a second order differential equation and therefore there must be two linearly independent solution second order means two solution should be there third order means three linearly independent solution must be there it should be there that is the point and of course they are there you have two linearly independent solutions are there both of them can be obtained using the power series method and the first linearly independent solution is what is denoted by the symbol plm of x and uh, people have given the name legender polynomial of the first kind so remember first kind first kind means first linearly independent solution then here i am going to write down uh, the name for the second linearly independent solution and the symbol is known as uh, q so i am going to write down capital q for that so if q is there then that is known as the second linearly independent solution and then uh, linear combination means put some constant and then add it that's all so this point is uh, what i would like to write down so we have the legender function of the second kind second kind means second linearly independent solution and this one will be the uh, legender polynomial of the first kind now once you this particular terminology is there uh, once again it should be clear that you have to be careful this is legender function is there this is function and this is legender polynomial okay the distinction uh, you should be aware uh, from your previous i mean the last semester mathematical physics uh, so for refreshing your memory i would like to tell that the legender function means it is not a polynomial which means that in principle okay if it is not polynomial then what it is it is actually an infinite series and since it is going to be an infinite series uh, there is no guarantee that the series will converge or not so you have to do the checking okay you have to check whether the series converges or diverges so what happens is that okay what happens is that this particular uh, this particular quantity namely written down by the qlm of x happens to be an infinite series and it diverges there is a conclusion now that it it diverges at x equal to plus 1 and x equal to minus 1 so now I, I already explained x equal to plus and minus 1 are very important now only it's coming now so this is the place where trouble comes now because the the particular infinite series diverges uh, it cannot represent any physical quantity so that is a point to be noted so so what is that we have to worry means something which is going to infinity cannot represent a, a physical quantity electrical potential cannot be infinity angular momentum cannot be infinity so therefore to avoid this situation i would like to say or we or we demand that you put b equal to 0 so if i substitute b equal to 0 in this particular place then the trouble is uh, you know you escape from that trouble so ultimately because of this reason what happens is only the legender a polynomial of the first kind is going to be the uh, acceptable i mean physically acceptable solution so i would like to write this conclusion now so only plm of x is the physically acceptable solution okay the, the, the arbitrary constant a okay it's always there you can multiply but the point is that uh, we are going to reject the second kind solution and accept only the 
PLM of X. And uh, the important thing is which is including, uh, this is important, including X equal to plus 1 and X equal to minus 1. So that means even if you include these two points, uh, you don't have any problem of infinity. So that is the clear. And in case of polar version, what will happen? Quite simple. Uh, if you want to uh, put x equal to cos theta, there is, then there is nothing new here. You have to simply put uh, cos theta. So PLM of cos theta. x equal to cos theta, right? That's all. And all other things are same. Whatever is there, true there and here also it is true. So I am simply copying that it is the solution to the associated legendary equation in polar form. But only thing is that the variable is now theta, right? So we have to say what is the value for theta. So therefore I will write down that it is valid for all values of theta including including theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi. Theta equal to pi. So that is exactly same as x equal to plus 1 and x equal to minus 1. Okay, so that's all. This is the main uh, information we need. And a small point uh, that I would like to mention, I think I will write uh, in this small, this space I will write down in another color. There's a small space right there I will write down. Now I would like to mention about the constant here, okay. So because of uh, these reasons, okay, beca because of these reasons that is going to infinity etc. Because of these reasons, uh, the constant that we are going to choose is of the form L into L plus 1. That's what, that is the reason for that. I would like to, I would like to make a point here that why the constant is uh, taking the appearance of L into L plus 1 rather than simple C. You can say that constant means C mean. Constant means C, right? But the question is, why did you choose L into L plus 1 means? Uh, uh, the reason for uh, uh, choosing L into L plus 1 instead of simply saying C is because of this reason. This reason means uh, when you are going to uh, theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi, the the second, I mean, the, the second kind legendary function goes to infinity. Therefore, we anyway rejected it. That is first point. Second point is the now only hopefully hopefully acceptable solution is only this fellow. That means legendary polynomial of the first kind. This is the only fellow available. If you reject this fellow also, you don't have any solution, right? Now this is what this is where this point is coming. You can ask the question why the constant has to be L into L plus 1 with L being an integer and L also positive. You see so many conditions are there. L has to be positive. L should be integer only. Fractional values are not allowed. Why do you want to put so many conditions? That is the uh, question. The answer is this. If you don't put all this condition and consider any constant, any constant means, okay, let us consider 13.29. Consider that constant. What will happen is, if you want to consider that constant, then what happens is, even the legendary polynomial of the first kind that you have, even that diverges. At, x, at theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi. So this is the problem. The problem is about the uh, about the what you call the divergence. Okay. So why, why divergence and convergence is coming into picture is uh, you should know from power series solution actually. Uh, the the legendary the legendary polynomial of the first kind is also power series. Legendary polynomial polynomial of the second kind is also a power series. Both of them are power series. But the second one, what happens is straight away it goes to infinity for all all possible values of uh, the constants for theta equal to zero and pi. Whatever number you put, that goes to infinity only for theta equal to zero and theta equal to pi. Therefore, the the legendary function of the second kind you straight away throw. Then who is left out? The left out fellow is only first kind fellow. Now this first kind fellow also what happened is sometimes the legendary polynomial of the first kind also goes to infinity. Okay, when it will go to infinity is when, when you have any number here, any number. So when this particular legendary polynomial will not go to infinity, when it will go, will not go to infinity is if and only if L happens to be an integer such that it is greater than or equal to 0. Of course, 0 is allowed. Uh, greater than or equal to 0 is the condition required. So why these kind of conditions are coming? Why the appearance is like L into L plus 1? Uh, ultimately, uh, the answer is uh, in the power series solution to the legendary differential equation. And uh, if you want to pinpoint where is the uh, difficulty, it is in the convergence. Even if you learn the power series solution, that will not give you the answer. You have to learn the convergence of the power series solution at the singular points theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi. That is important. Theta equal to 0 is a singular point. Theta equal to pi is a singular point of the differential equation. So, 
you have to learn the behavior of the infinite power series at the singular points based on that uh, this l into l plus 1 is decided and that is the that is how the appearance is there right you can uh, i would like to show where is the l into l plus 1 uh, that is the one so i will highlight so uh, just i am explaining why it has to be l into l plus 1 okay that's all this is quite important otherwise you know randomly we can't write uh, something uh, as we like so also uh, fine and this is one important point about the l about the l but you have also m right there is another variable or another constant m so i would like to write a small note on that so what is the note is about l i explained but what about m so restrictions on the values of the m uh, there could be there okay you may have some restrictions uh, on the values of the m uh, who, who will put the restriction means you see that depends on how the uh, how the associated legendre polynomial is defined okay from where the restriction will come if at all any restriction is there then it will be from the definition of the plm of cos theta so uh, i so i will not enter into the definition right now because you already studied the definition of the legendre polynomial uh, from the so called generating function okay a generating function is there or a rodriguez formula is also there you can use any one of them and then generate so if you see that formula okay some numbers if you put no there also trouble will come you cannot evaluate that expression maybe going to zero or uh, or some some number cannot be uh, cannot be calculated for example if i get a minus uh, 7 factorial what will you do minus 7 factorial you you cannot uh, or we don't have a definition for the negative value for the factorial it has to be positive value right so when you enter into this kind of trouble automatically what happens is Uh, you put the restriction on m okay if you allow all possible values of m what happens is uh, just now i said right negative factorial will come uh, and then uh, uh, and then what happens is this uh, this particular legendre uh, polynomial is becoming undefined okay we don't want a solution to be undefined solution isn't it so the one, when you say that it is acceptable solution then solution should be defined and uh, we must be able to perform numerical calculations on that and therefore Uh, uh from from for due to these reasons that means uh, from the definition of the plm of cos theta itself uh, you may get some additional restrictions on m okay the restrictions on l i already told you that l into l plus 1 is there so this may come in future uh, when you when you look into that so keep this in mind okay so almost that is fine i think now with this we are of course we are quite happy we can now move on to the uh, solution methodology of the laplace equation so i would like to go to uh, another place and then write down so let me therefore write down the solution of the electrostatic boundary value problem okay so you know what it is let us start with del square u equal to 0 so that is the equation that we are interested in uh, and uh, of course there is a laplace equation fine but here i am going to use the symbol u for the electric potential that is the thing and the name laplace equation you know if the uh, if the right hand side is not equal to 0 this is already known to you if the right hand side is not equal to 0 then we will call this as poisson equation whose solution we have seen using the green function Okay, so that discussion let us not bring. So now let us uh, write this in the spherical spherical coordinate system, which is actually three D. So you know how you know how to write down the del square operator in the spherical system. We have already seen from the beginning of this uh, classical electrodynamics. We are looking at the operator del square, right? So I will write down uh, the del square operator in the spherical polar coordinate system. we say that del square u equal to 1 by r square into then you have an r square u r r this particular style of writing i already explained to you so let me therefore write down i think this is del square u no so i won't write here yeah okay so that should be a del square u okay so then you have a plus that is correct okay so okay plus 1 divided by r square sin theta then you have a sin theta u theta theta then you have the last term one divided by r square sin square theta and multiplied by 
u phi phi that entire thing is equal to zero so this is the uh, this is the expression for uh, the del square operator and here the point to be noted is that the operator means you don't have a function so if you want to write only operator then u has to be deleted so that is what i mean to say uh, this is not an operator if del square u means it's a function if the function is deleted then what you will be having is only del square that is called operator and in that case what happens is everywhere you will have to remove the uh, u and then keep the only partial derivative this is actually partial derivative this suffix is partial derivative so you have to keep d by dr as a partial derivative and remove the u if you write like that then it is called operator now this operator is operating on the on the electrostatic potential to get this particular expression so that is uh, that is the meaning of this uh, entire expression and then the suffix notation i think i already explained in uh, some of the previous lectures uh, our style of writing down will be like uh, these suffixes will represent the partial derivative that means uh, this is actually do u by do r and this is actually do by do r of the entire quantity the entire quantity you take do by do r that means partial derivative with respect to r similarly this is this is entire expression de partial derivative with respect to theta and here this is entire quantity uh, partial derivative with respect to phi this notation is little comfortable for reading purposes reading means you can easily read and then uh, and then that will enter into your mind so how do you read is urr urr you can read easily if so many partial derivatives are there you know uh, reading may be difficult so this is easy to read 1 by r square r square urr sin theta u theta theta u phi phi like that you can read and therefore it uh, it is somewhat comfortable for uh, for remembering and then writing in the final exam it will be useful that is the only reason uh, i i prefer this particular uh, suffix notation and uh, let us identify what is unknown quantity uh, what is that you want to find in this equation so uh, what is that we want to find means only u u of r comma theta comma phi is the quantity that is unknown unknown means what the electric potential that we would like to calculate that is an unknown quantity so uh, that is the thing that to be that is called a solution solution means finding the value of u and r theta phi you already know that they are the independent variables in the coordinate system and then uh, because this is a differential equation a boundary condition uh, to be provided uh, it should be provided or it should be known to you that's the meaning and uh, you know what is the meaning of the boundary condition that means the uh, value of the uh, electric potential on the boundary uh, boundary means you know uh, dou you can write okay so either you give the value of u or you give the value of dou u by dou r something like that that means partial derivative either you give the original u or derivative so i think i would i would better write down uh, the name for this that space is not enough the dou is typically written for the boundary okay so let me therefore uh, better i write it into two i will split and write down this boundary condition what do you, what are the two boundary conditions available is that you will you will be having the the dirichlet boundary condition and the and the neumann boundary condition of course you have a mixed boundary condition is also there if you if you mix both of them then it is known as the mixed boundary condition known as the robin boundary condition so first these are the main things first thing is dirichlet and another thing is the uh, the neumann boundary condition okay so what is the meaning of the dirichlet boundary condition means directly the value of the unknown itself will be given to you okay here in the neumann boundary condition means derivative will be given so either you give the directly or you give the derivative that is the difference between the dirichlet and the neumann boundary condition okay so it is given on the boundary of course given on the boundary that is important right the value will be provided on the boundary that boundary is the the, the standard mathematical symbol is you know uh, do omega uh, that is how the mathematicians uh, write so omega is means volume do omega means boundary of the volume that is the standard symbol in mathematics so uh, now you understand so here i am i am just uh, i would like to write compactly so boundary condition should be provided that is what i was trying to write
So once the information about uh, how the boundary condition is going to look like, uh, then then it's fine. We can move ahead to the method of solution. So I would like to uh, see how we are going to calculate the uh, unknown variable u. So let me therefore write down how we are going to proceed. Okay, the methodology of the solution will be like this. So first of all, we are going to assume uh, that the that the unknown function is the function of three variables, right? So let us assume that a function of three variables r, theta, and phi could be rewritten, uh, rewritten, okay, as a product of uh, two functions. Uh, one is made up of r and the other is made up of angle. That is how I am going to write. Okay, a single function of three variable is we are going to propose that it is going to be a product of two functions. Uh, one is a function of only angles. So angular part we would like to separate. We don't know whether it is separating uh, successfully or not. But we are going to propose that is the uh, that is the point to be noted. Uh, so the point here is that we are going to assume. Okay, it is not that we already know that we will be able to separate. So whenever you have a function of several variables like this, in case if there is a possibility that you can rewrite them in, as functions of uh, uh, separate separate variables, then it is always easy to deal with further calculation. So this is the standard rule. If that is not possible, then then the situation is going to be quite complicated. So in first place, we do not have any idea whether uh, such a kind of uh, separation is possible or not but however we are going to attempt like this so this is always the first step if this is successful then it is going to be uh, convenient and we will be happy because the methodology will be simple so that is exactly what we are trying so basically what we are trying is we are trying to separate the uh, separate the angular variables and the distance variable Okay, so this is some kind of separation we are doing and uh, whenever we are going to do this separation, uh, generally this method is known as the uh, method of separation of variable. That is how the title is. Of course, you must have studied the separation of variable method for ordinary differential equation. So that methodology is quite different. Okay, for partial differential equation, uh, the procedure is a little lengthy. So let us therefore see what we are going to do that. No, no, no. I would like to, let me erase this. So uh, what I would like to say is that uh, we will have some kind of notation that uh, uh, let us use capital letters for functions, okay, uh, functions and then uh, we will use the small letter for variables. So as you see here, uh, in this particular expression, which is variable and which is a function, okay, that should be clear to you. And this is the function name. Okay. So this u is a function name. R, theta, phi are variable. So if you look at all of them, all of them are small letters. Okay. Phi is small letter. Greek variable small letter. Theta is also small letter. So u, r, everything is small letter. Coming here, once again, this f is a small letter. We don't have a capital letter here. So therefore, uh, suppose if I am going to uh, remove theta and phi and write only g, then there is a possible confusion that whether it is g is a function or g is a variable. You know, so there is a possibility for a confusion. So we would like to avoid all possible confusion and make it clear in the sense that let us put capital letters for the function name and then the, let the small letter be there for the for the variables. So that is how that is a plan. So in that particular case, let us therefore write down like this. Uh, u of r comma theta comma theta phi will be equal to a function of r multiplied by a function of uh, angles. So in this particular case, as you see, uh, that we are it is preferable to use the same capital letter. So r is the small letter, right? Uh, for the case of uh, uh, variable, it is better to choose the corresponding capital letter so that uh, you know you don't have to search for new variable. So that is the reason why we have chosen. It is also traditional in this particular way. And because theta and phi, two of them are there, uh, we, we can't choose the corresponding letter. So let us therefore put some capital letter there. That is the thing. This one let us not change because this u is uh, the one that appears in the in the original uh, Laplace equation. And therefore, this u will not come any, any further. And therefore, let us not worry about this particular u. And uh, let us now see whether this kind of uh, separation is successful or not. How do you check whether it is going to be successful or not is 
that method is quite simple if you are going to assume like this this is our assumption so our assumption whatever we are going to assume that you substitute into a original differential equation if you substitute into original differential equation then you can decide or you can you can make a conclusion whether the whether the separation into uh, the radial radial part and the separation into the angular part whether that was successful or not at that time only you will be knowing so now we will substitute into the original differential equation okay and if you if you see the original differential equation you will have some partial derivatives let file it at okay so uh, i think we'll let us go and see the original differential equation we have equation number 1 right no it's not there so we put a 1 here okay so uh, the the point that i'm trying to say is you have partial derivatives so you need to evaluate do u by do r do u by do theta and do u by do phi if you evaluate that only then we are ready to substitute uh, into this particular equation okay so that's what we are going to do after the substitution and the simplification we will be in a position to tell whether the separation is successful or not okay that's what we are going to do so let, let us therefore uh, try to evaluate those partial derivatives so let us uh, the ur will be the do u by do r and uh, the rest of the th calculations are quite simple and uh, let us uh, proceed with the steps there do by do r of capital r into capital f so now you know uh, which one to differentiate and which one is uh, to be taken outside it's a partial derivative means only r part f part will not be affected isn't it therefore f part you take it out and differentiate the r part now you have to uh, you have to carefully see that it has it has become uh, a total derivative so that is the place where you have to be careful and see and observe that it has become total derivative is this point clear so this uh, this this is the di differentiation is with, with respect to the r and therefore f will come out then what is happening is do r by do r only we have to write this is a do right partial derivative okay do r by do r i have to write but i have written dr by dr so the reason how did you uh, convert this into total derivative is that whenever the function is going to depend on a single variable see this capital r is a function that function is going to depend on a single variable r okay whenever a particular function is going to depend on a single variable the derivative is always total only there is no there is no concept of partial derivative for a function of single variable only when you learn multivariable calculus you get the partial derivative right when you are learning single variable calculus there are no partial derivative the reason is partial derivative and uh, total derivative have the same meaning or we can say that partial derivative concept is not there for a uh, single variable problem therefore capital r of r is a single variable therefore any derivative that you do is only total derivative therefore we will uh, we will change the symbol do to d here so that is that the same thing let us therefore make this conclusion and put some kind of box or highlight this is one result we need and once you have this we would like to calculate the other partial derivatives so i'll write down like that similarly we can perform similarly the theta derivative can be evaluated like this i have a do by do, p, do theta of capital r into capital f and that's it as usual uh, here r will come out and then and then this has to be a partial derivative now you see this is partial derivative because it's a function of two variables are there so it cannot be converted therefore u theta is equal to capital r into do f by do theta and that's it and we will we need one more derivative so let us evaluate a similar derivative for the last variable uh, u phi which is equal to r into do f by do phi so now that we have uh, we have all the expressions for the partial derivatives we are ready to uh, substitute all these things into uh, all these things into the equation number 1 okay just now i have shown you where is the equation number 1 so in that place let me also show you once again so in this particular equation number 1 we are going to substitute all ur u theta etc okay but uh, better to if you are going to have it in sheet of paper you can uh, you can copy and write down but now that you can't see everything in the screen okay so let us therefore substitute and see how it looks like 1 by r square d by dr of r square into capital f into 
capital F means capital F of theta comma phi. That's the meaning. Uh, and then plus first term is over plus second term is one over sine one over r square sine theta. Then you have a dou by dou theta. Then open bracket uh, dou by dou theta of sine theta into. Then you have a capital R and dou f by dou theta. So second term is over and the last term we can write down 1 by r square sin square theta and then dou by dou phi. No, no, no. Dou by dou phi, right? So that should be dou by dou phi of capital R into uh, dou phi by dou f by dou phi. Okay, fine. That is equal to 0. That's all. So we have now substituted everything there and let us simplify this. Okay. Simplification is fairly simple. You, you differentiate. Let us differentiate this. Uh, we will be getting, you know, you apply the UV rule, you know, product rule. I will be getting R square into capital R double prime. Then you have a 2R times ca capital R single prime. Single prime means what? DR by DR. Plus 1 by, uh, you have R square sine theta. I think there is no much simplification. Only R is coming out, that's all. The rest of the thing is same. Whatever remains, you write down. And similarly, in the last one, what happens? Only capital R is coming out. So, I'll write down capital R. And that's all. That uh, two derivatives are same. So, let us make the second order derivative, dou square. Okay, now that you got this particular expression, now we have to uh, manipulate somehow. Okay, do something and then try to see whether the, whether the uh, radial part is separated or not. So, here therefore, uh, let me therefore uh, explain what I am writing. We are going to do some multiplication. Uh, uh, you see, if you see this particular expression, this is a function of r. This is r itself. Okay, this is r itself. This is a function of r. This is r itself, and this is a function of r. So the entire thing is a function of r, and the divided by r square is also there. So all these things are function of r. But now there is a mixture of the angular variable. Capital F means what? Capital F of theta comma phi. So therefore, angular part is mixing with the radial part. You come here. This the radial part is mixing with the angular part. The radial part is mixing with the angular part. So if you see, each and every term is mixed with everything, and we we are not uh, uh, we are we have not yet, uh, successfully uh, separated. So first thing is whether we are able to separate that itself. We do not know. So now you have to think what can be done. Can we do something, some kind of rearrangement of terms, or uh, uh, you can uh, you can divide the entire thing by something. Uh, you you have to think what can be done so that so that a, a one particular term is a function of r only that's what we are we are trying to see so in this particular case uh, doing uh, uh, manipulation in the second term and third term is uh, there is no hope for us why there is no hope is that f is already a function of theta comma phi you know in the very beginning we have kept you know capital f is a function of theta comma phi so already it is a function of two variable here so therefore, uh, looking for a separation in terms of capital F is uh, hopeless. So that there is no hope here. So if at all there is anything that can be done, he, it is this place. In case if this F is not there, you, you just imagine if the, this F is not there, we are very happy that this entire thing is a function of R only. So we are successfully separating the R. So that means what we have to do is this F we have to divide the entire equation. Okay, The entire equation, if you divide it by F, this F will disappear. Isn't it? So this is one idea there where the where the angular part can be eliminated from the first term. And coming to the second and third term, uh, what is interesting is this r square if it is not there, let us assume that is r square is not there, r square is not there. If these two terms are not there, what is the meaning? The meaning is that uh, we will be having uh, we will be having only the theta part. You see this? We have only the theta part and uh, phi part f is a function of theta phi so this is theta phi this is also theta phi so therefore it is clear that we would we would uh, uh, rather uh, say that let us divide this equation by capital f and multiply by this equation by r square so that this r square will go this f also will go so let us try to do that that's what i'm writing writing now let us multiply by r square and divide by uh, let us divide by capital f into r let us divide by capital f into r Okay, you understand what is the why why we have to divide like this? If you divide by capital F, this this will disappear, 
if you divide by uh, this combination this or also will disappear because this or and this or square this or square is because of multiplication so if these two things disappear we will be left out with the angle part here we will be left out with the uh, only radial part here so let us rewrite and see uh, whatever i am explaining is visible and this product is interestingly the original function u of r okay so there is uh, usually the original function that we assumed itself happens to be the product that we are going to do so this happened after doing all this calculation we will see that uh, the rest of the thing is same 2r and r prime those things are same then plus you you have only one divided by capital of sin theta uh, then we can write down in the suffix notation if you are going to use the suffix notation uh, we can write like this suffix notation means what do by do theta notation okay 1 divided by capital F here I think you have a capital F then yeah those two things are cancelled we have a capital F then sin square theta then I will be getting do square F by do phi square that is equal to 0 so now now you will be able to appreciate that which is uh, which component is only radial compa uh, depends on radial function and which one is depending on purely on angle so if you are able to see that uh, let me put a bracket and show uh, let me put a bracket for the second and the third term that's what I've been explaining that uh, the second and the third term if you together it's a function of angle only whereas the first term alone if you put a bracket now that is a function of uh, R only so in that way we have separated successfully the R part and then we have separated the angular part so now what is to be now there is a now what can be done so to this extent we are happy what what is to be done now is the following now this is a, a set of two equations with a plus here becoming single equation uh, are you following what i mean to say from here to here it looks like a single equation right equation number three but if you think carefully this is a function of one variable and this is function of another set of variables so these two things are uh, two of the two independent variable right r theta phi are independent variable so uh, this entire expression is independent of this that is the meaning okay if this is not clear then you can imagine in terms of a numerical value whenever you are performing a calculation on the uh, within the sphere for example if you are going to substitute the numerical value for the r theta and phi okay you you stay anywhere on the sphere you have the value for r theta phi right you can always substitute r theta phi value and then evaluate numerically if you evaluate numerically then some number will be there here plus some other number that will be there for these two terms together so first number in this green color bracket plus the entire number whatever be the single number that you have for this entire green color bracket that addition should always give zero this is point clear so if that is the case if that is the case what do you understand what do you understand is if this is some constant that you are going to have then that must be the opposite of that constant that means in simple language i will say that if this constant is capital sorry if this constant is 10 then this particular entire thing should be minus 10 then only 10 plus minus 10 will give you zero so this is the basic idea and uh, and this methodology is going to work because the r e, r theta and phi are independent variable independent variable means uh, one will not affect the other that's the meaning of independent variable and therefore if this is if this idea is clear let us represent now why should i say that it should be 10 we can say any number right therefore we will say that uh, let us denote this by something like k square Okay. by k square means just to say positive number that's all about it if you assume we don't know that it's positive or not but if we are going to consider that that is k square then whatever is there in the uh, second green color bracket that entire thing should be negative of the k square so that should be clear so now you understand why k square is there so if one of them is positive the second thing should be negative because the total has to go to zero so if this is the situation now the this particular equation can be split into two equations that is the purpose so why we are doing all this thing is we would like to split it into two small small equations so first green color bracket i will write it down as a one equation let me finish 
to no no small r is not coming properly to r okay r prime then entire thing is equal to that is k square okay so that is one equation so we are now splitting that into two equations and another equation is the another green color bracket whatever is there you simply copy it okay so that will be minus of k square so now our our understanding is that uh, now it has become we have split it into two equations one plus k square and the next one should be a minus k square and i would like to say that this is a function of r only and that is a now you must be able to see that the entire equation is a function of theta and phi whereas the previous equation will be a function of r alone so the function of r alone is the place where we are successful we have now separated therefore this method is really working and therefore we have to be happy and now that we have a theta and phi once again you see theta and phi are combined right so now the question is that can you also separate theta and phi that is a question so let us proceed therefore in a similar style so you know the style of uh, uh, calculation that first of all we have to assume something and then proceed so we will once again assume the not substitution we are going to assume it okay so let us once again assume or use so what are we going to assume is that the capital f of theta comma phi let us assume it as a product of two separate functions one is a function of theta alone let us say it is g of theta something like that a function of theta alone and another function of phi alone so th this is what we are planning to assume uh, now the point to be noted is that this is a small letter phi of course this is greek letter this is a small letter phi and that is a capital letter phi so capital letter phi means you know the, the horizontal lines are there here it will not be there so you have to be careful to write if you are unable to write like this then uh, no similar to g you, you choose something like capital h okay so nothing wrong in that so it is tradition to use the uh, corresponding capital symbol here you see here uh, why did you use capital r means small r is the variable so choose the corresponding capital letter that is a tradition and here also you can use like that this is a small letter theta uh, you can actually choose the capital letter theta uh, you can actually choose but writing down capital theta is little difficult you know uh, in the books they will print so printing is easy right but writing down capital theta is little difficult and therefore uh, i'm choosing another symbol so if you are comfortable choose this otherwise uh, put some sim some other symbol like capital h okay so that is our basic assumption if this is the assumption then you know what to do then the next step you already know what do you know means you evaluate this partial derivatives uh, and then substitute into this so that is the uh, that is the traditional method of uh, checking whether it is successful method or not so let us therefore evaluate the partial derivatives f theta means do f by do theta right so uh, now the calculations are uh, quite simple let us evaluate them and then f pi means do phi by do f by do phi and one of the function will not be affected the other function is a function of one variable therefore it becomes total derivative and that's it we can we are ready to substitute all these things into equation number 5 okay and okay that can be in equation number 6 let it be there so now keep all these things and keep uh, substitute and verify what happens now we get uh, 1 divided by uh, 1 divided by f is there f means g phi so let us write capital g capital phi then you have a sine theta then you have a dou by dou theta that uh, you know the suffix is actually dou by dou theta okay uh, then the rest of the thing is simple sine theta then then this is uh, capital phi multiplied by dg by d theta plus similarly you write down for the second one and all that thing okay whatever comes now all that thing should be okay 
okay so all that thing should be equal to minus k square now that is what is there in equation number five so you write down that so now as usual you know what to do now you have to think the manipulation manipulation means multiplying something dividing something somehow you manage and then bring all the theta one side and all the phi on another side so for that purpose if you think what can be done uh, it is quite trivial that uh, you can only multiply by sine square theta it is enough if you multiply by sine square theta that uh, we are able to do something better to separate the variables let us see how it works let us multiply and see and what about the yeah sin theta sin square theta is there that phi is going to come out right so that will get cancelled out so therefore i will be getting only g uh, now it is a function of total derivative this is a dg by d theta okay fine then plus similarly there uh, sin square theta will get cancelled g will be getting cancelled one divided by capital phi capital phi important okay don't put small phi and all that thing that uh, k square can come to the left side so i'll put a plus k square but we are multiplying by sin square theta right so let us therefore multiply sin square theta is equal to zero and that's all about it and here so this is clear the k square has come uh, taken to the left side that's fine but the, you have to pay attention to this total derivative so this was a partial derivative now how it has become total derivative is because inside this so you see this inside this uh, you, you are having you are having a phi variable also you are having theta variable also so it's a function of uh, two variables are there that is the reason but now what happens is because this is a partial derivative uh, phi will not be affected so the phi is taken out and that is getting cancelled here so once phi is disappearing what is left out is only sin theta into dg by d theta so sin theta into dg by d theta and both of them are function of theta only only no other variable is there and therefore what happens is partial derivative will be converted to total derivative or we mean to say that partial derivative is naturally total derivative okay converting means not uh, we are not doing anything whatever partial derivative that you have that itself is known as total derivative that is the meaning and similarly this is uh, in here there is no trouble uh, here already you got the total derivative and it's only a matter of cancelling here uh, and now you will and uh, now can you see which part is phi dependent only the middle term see the middle term is uh, depending on phi whereas the first term and the last term you know uh, that is uh, depending on theta so i can't put uh, two brackets now uh, actually i have to write down here if i write this as a second term and write that as a third term I can put the bracket and show you but instead of that let me put some kind of color i will highlight in some color so that you know the distinction will come so first i will highlight the phi part because there is a small term that you have let me put in some kind of yellow color so that is the uh, only term that depends on phi and the rest of the thing is the green color let me highlight both of them in green color which means you know they go together so uh, the green color one is the one that is going to depend on uh, theta only okay terms in green means theta only and uh, i will also write down for the for the yellow color one that term is only depending on phi only so next to what to do you know okay what is the next idea is once you have separated like this now you have to split it into multiple small small equation that is the next step so therefore i would like to uh, we will we will give some kind of uh, uh, number like i was talking about some number right uh, like 10 i explained see you see now you consider uh, suppose if the green color terms okay first term plus the last term if that uh, total is uh, you know 10 then whatever is the red color should be a minus 10 so that the zero is there here now because of the zero only all these things work that is why i already told you that we are starting with the homogeneous differential equation you know laplace equation if it is inhomogeneous differential equation this zero will not be there so you know taking uh, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of 10 and minus 10 that idea will not work so that is why for inhomogeneous differential equation we had a different story uh, with the green function method okay so in that way we have to be very uh, fortunate to deal with the uh, method of separation of variable uh, so like fortunate means we should have, you have to feel happy in this particular way 
the reason is the, the reason is the following you know the story of the differential equation is you know a complicated story uh, you don't have uh, you don't have a well defined solution uh, methodology for a set of given differential equations so this is the ultimate truth in the in the story of the differential equation uh, it, Uh, you have a, you have a standard theorem in the very beginning of a differential equation course which says that there exists a solution that is the statement of the theorem okay once you have a once you have a well behaved uh, differential equation given to you with all continuous functions then the theorem says that there exists a solution to this differential equation and the solution is unique and that's it after that full stop will be there so the question is that where is the solution and how do you find answer is not there in that theorem so which means that one has to uh, one has to attempt all possible ways you now you have to you have to do all gymnastics there and then try to find the solution okay and if you and if you discovered one method of solution that particular method will not work for another differential equation so that is where the trouble is okay if you discover one method if the same method works for all differential equation then we will be very happy that doesn't happen okay the method that 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 works for one particular differential equation that method will not work for another equation you already know we started from the cauchy euler equation where i said that some substitution has to be done why this why we have to substitute to x to the power lambda means see that is how people have discovered people have attempted various various substitution and they failed and ultimately they discovered that x to the power lambda substitution works that's all about it okay so that is how the uh, things are evolving and uh, it doesn't mean that the, the next equation if i give uh, that method will not work for example legendre differential equation the legendre differential equation you have made a small change to the cauchy euler equation but what happened x to the power lambda substitution will not work you have to use a power series method and which is completely a different method and uh, so this is the story of the differential equation one method uh, or one technique that you know for solving one differential equation will not or in general will not work for another variety of differential equation and therefore uh, differential equation always poses difficulty and therefore in this particular you know uh, in this particular uh, tough scenario uh, when the method of separation of uh, variable is working uh, we are very happy because if this is, suppose if the method of separation of variable doesn't work you don't have any other method okay you will have to again you have to resort to some some numerical methods of solving the differential equation which means that you write a program and get a numerical solution okay you can't get analytical solution so majority of the differential equation in practice okay which are in practical applications uh, you cannot find the solution by analytical techniques that is a real pity in the in the story of the differential equation and therefore uh, when we are talking about the method of separation of variable you should not think that you know, it is something that is too elementary it is not so okay so that is the point to be noted and once this idea is clear what we are trying to do you now is that we are going to uh, because these are all independent variables phi is independent variable when compared to the theta we can always say that if this is constant okay some number this green color uh, which which is what i am going to write down by some m square then the quantity under the yellow color uh, should be equal to minus of the m square so that the total will go to zero so that is the uh, standard technique and therefore let me therefore write down uh, that the yellow color term should be correspondingly equal to minus of the m square why why it has to be minus of m square is to get the zero there so because there is a zero on the right hand side because of that reason it happens and once this is clear now we are in a position to split it into two equations it was a single equation right now we can split it into two equations so i will write down the phi part that is the yellow color part 1 divided by capital phi d square capital phi by d phi square would be equal to minus m square that is one one part which is split up and then the rest of the green color uh, part is sin theta divided by capital g multiplied by d by d theta of all that thing you simply write down the entire thing and uh, one plus second term i mean the k square that and equal to positive of the m square and give some numbers i think what was the old number you remember 5 6 was there right so we will give 7 now 7 and 8 we can give
okay once you have seven and eight now we are now we are in a position to solve it actually okay now we can see that each one of the equation has become small small equation and therefore we will try to solve the equation number seven so let us write down d square capital phi by d phi square you cross multiply and then uh, you know, cross multiply and bring it to the left side i will be getting a plus m square capital phi will be equal to zero and uh, equal to zero and the condition is that you know uh, m should be a uh, positive integer okay th this particular condition i will again come back what is this i am trying to write this is the condition that i in the very beginning the last class i explained with the graph sin theta graph i explained for the periodicity so anyway that will come in another two steps so once you have this particular equation uh, now we are able to write down the solution for this it is like a cos theta plus b sin theta right that is the solution and you know that cos theta plus sin theta can be rewritten in the Euler form so i want to write in exponential notation like that and and other uh, condition for the m square or m should be clear to you that it should belong to the positive integer okay or we say non actually it is known as non-negative integer and the reason is already explained to you the, the reason is that uh, that you should have what you call the periodic function why it is periodic function is cos cos and sine graph i explained in the last class if you want to demand a periodic function uh, in the along the phi direction then it is uh, it is a consequence that the m has to be a non-negative number so what is meant by periodic function you understand right uh, 2 pi plus 5 you add you have to get back to the original actually i have explained to you why m has to be a positive number in terms of graph okay last lecture m previous lecture beginning i explained but now i will explain uh, without graph how to understand okay i would like to write down without drawing the sin theta graph also you can understand why m has to be an integer so we will use this equation okay we have that equation right the condition for the periodicity and using that we can we can understand let us therefore simplify that how will you understand capital phi of phi that's what we have right capital phi of phi should be equal to capital phi of 2 pi plus phi so uh, you, you can understand what is the meaning of this the meaning is that wherever you are standing on the uh, sphere somewhere you are standing right and there you stand you don't uh, there you, you stand and remember where you are and you travel along a horizontal circle i already shown you the uh, typical picture of the sphere which is horizontal circle which is vertical circle so now you travel along the horizontal circle in such a way that uh, you travel 360 degree so 360 degree if you travel where will you come you you come to 2, two pi plus phi right so after making that travel where will you be standing you will be standing in the same place where you left right that is your original place so in that original place what is my my function my function means let us say electric potential it could be phi is a representation okay so we are talking about electric potential so you are standing in the original place and then uh, made a roundabout by 360 degree along the horizontal circle and you came to the original place and then you ask the question what is the electric potential now the answer should be it is the same electric potential before i moved from the place isn't it it should be same that is this equality so i am i am coming back after 360 degree means but my potential should be equal so this condition should be satisfied so we are going to impose this condition for this solution e to the power i m phi that means this capital phi you dump this here and then there will be m coming into picture so there will be an m coming into picture and then we are going to add to this and once you uh, once you substitute you can quickly see what happens so let me substitute and show there is nothing difficult it's only a substitution of that expression and then you know try to cancel the e to the power of im phi on both the side uh, how how it is cancelling i think are you able to see otherwise i will remove this maybe i will write one more step okay i will i will erase this how one comes you should know right so if you cancel e to the power i m phi you will get one so that step also i will write down a a cancels e to the power i m phi equal to a 
now you cancel the e to the power i m phi i get 1 equal to e to the power of 2 pi i m and that's it you solve this equation this is a trigonometric equation right you can now solve if you solve this equation the solution says that the solution says that m has to be integer m has to be an integer for the system So once this is clear, uh, you agree that the m has to be an integer and of course that's all about it and uh, so we can write down the solution. Do you remember what's the solution? Cos m phi plus i sin m phi. So let me therefore write down. Let us write down in this small place. The solution to the equation number 7 is given by capital phi is equal to a to the power of i m phi and that's all. Where m is an integer so that's fine and I would like to uh, from here I think um, let us give some number and so as you see that we started with this equation number 7 for the solution okay uh, and even before that we had one equation that we have not yet solved and uh, similarly you have equation number 8 so you have to solve that equation number 8 also and uh, the starting place itself we had one equation okay I don't know what is that equation number maybe 5 or so so we will verify that so now that we have solved this one, the two more equations we will have to solve and then and then assemble all of them together, then we will be getting the finally, final solution. So let us continue. Uh, uh, in the next class, we will see how to solve equation number 8 and then, uh, and then the corresponding uh, equation number 5, I think. And then let us see how to write the formal way of uh, the solution to the Laplace equation. That part we will see in the next class.